Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to night two of the 2021 Chemnitz Hanukkah special. Hanukkah came very early this year and today is the Monday after Thanksgiving, which is often known as Cyber Monday and there are lots of really great deals for online shopping and likely a lot of really awesome yarn deals as well. So if I have found any special deals, I will include it at the top of the video description down below. So it's worth checking if you're watching this on Monday night so you can take advantage of some really great deals on yarn. Back to tonight's yarn. Tonight I want to focus on dip dyeing yarn. And because it's so close to Thanksgiving, I want to include a big dose of thankfulness into the colorway tonight. But I'll be talking about that more in a little bit. So let's go dye our yarn. When I started thinking about thankful, I immediately of course thought about my family. But I also thought about my act of reflection and when and where I like to reflect and I'm really able to think and process about the things going on in my life. And that has a lot to do with trees. And so I wanted to create a foresty, simple inspired colorway using Dharma Pecan Brown and Forest Green. I know this might not be traditional Thanksgiving where you might have warm reds and oranges that sort of go along with fall vegetables and Thanksgiving type foods, but I really wanted to bring myself into nature for this. And so we are going to create a very simple green and brown colorway. And I don't think I use brown like enough as a star in my dyeing. And so I really want to give it more of a moment versus being an accent. At least that is my goal. I put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves to mix up our dye stocks. To get started, I went ahead and made a 1% stock solution of each of these two colors. That means that I would measure out one gram of dye and dissolve it in a total of 100 milliliters of volume. And since I'm gonna be dyeing a lot of yarn, I went ahead and made up a liter of this 1% stock for each of the colors. So I used 10 grams of dye in one liter of water. I have always spent a lot of time thinking about trees. And actually when I was a kid, I did weekly fundraisers for the tree fund in the town that I lived at the time. So for this inspiration, I'm really pulling back from my childhood and my love of trees and nature and outside. I am pre-soaking our 10 gram mini skeins in just some plain tap water for a couple of hours so it is nice and saturated. I have the yarn grouped in bundles of 10 10 gram skeins so each one that I pick will be equivalent of 100 grams. There is one that has just five minis on it but the rest are all 10 and there is no acid at all in our pre-soak. It has been a while since I have included just a purely dip dyed colorway into one of my samplers. And I do often get questions about how does a dip dyed colorway knit up? Because compared to a lot of the other kinds of colorways I dye, dip dyed yarn has a more repeating pattern with some subtle variation, but it is one that is prone to pooling. Now I do want to point out one thing because the kind of pattern and pooling you get depends a lot on the size of your skein. The mini skeins that I am using are this big. <laughs> I didn't measure it, but this is the size of the mini skeins. And I wanted to compare it to a skein of stroll, which is, you know, a reasonable amount longer before dying. So swatching dip dyed mini skeins compared to say a dip dyed skein of Knit Pick Stroll, they would pool differently. It would pattern differently. So therefore the size of your skein does matter. Think about the extreme. If you had a six meter skein and you dip dyed it, well, then you would get sort of a repeating self striping color because there would be enough. So you would get those long color transitions and you'd get shorter color transitions with either of these skeins. So I did want to just point out the size differential. So not every kind of colorway you do on a pre-made micro or mini skein will give you similar results to how something might knit up on a, a dip, 
a different commercial skein. So that is something to pay attention to. But I still wanted to do this because one of my goals for these Hanukkah samplers is to include multiple different types of colorways so you can play with them and see how they knit up because that is really one of the most frequently asked questions I ever get. You probably noticed I had a little bit of a spill when putting the green into a bottle. So we have now started a yarn mop. Uh, <laughs> A yarn mop that I will be using for today's video uh, and yeah it has no acid in it yet and it has just some soaked up dye so I'm gonna set this aside until we have another need for a yarn mop oh my goodness in this stainless steel dye pot I have 16 cups of water and I'm gonna add four tablespoons of white vinegar and 100 milliliters of the pecan brown acid dye. And I'm probably gonna use pecan and pecan very interchangeably. And so this is pretty hot already. I do want to come and give it just like a nice little stir. When I'm dip dyeing, I like to have tongs on hand to help me uh, move the yarn around in the pot. And you can see we've got a lot of steam. The pot's pretty warm. We're gonna start dip dyeing 200 grams of the fingering weight yarn. And as we dip, I want to go slow for one, but I also want to make sure that as I dip, I move things around and let the yarn really float because um, otherwise you can see that in these more interior sections, we can get less color. So another thing I can do is come in with the tongs, help move things around as I raise and lower, going a little bit deeper each time. Now starting with a larger volume of water means that colors may absorb a tiny bit slower, but also gives us space so that way when we dip the yarn in, we can move things around, um, which is nice. Now clearly, I'm gonna want these colors to overlap, and I'm gonna want, ooh, see how much more pastel it is already? There's a lot of color that has not bound yet, but if I just dip in really quickly, you can see there's a lot less pigment than what we had at the beginning. Now, what we can do, is do this until all of the colors have absorbed or another choice is that we can come in at some point with a yarn mop to help soak up the color that is left which actually there's not that much left but we can use a yarn mop to help soak up remaining color should we want to do that um, and then I can set this aside to wait for the green. Now, this could mean that we have a little bit of variation between various skeins, but there will be variation probably anyway. There's something like slightly reddish at the end. I don't know if this is something that would break if I had slightly different conditions, because if I dip the yarn in now, you can see that there's not very much pigment left, but I think what I'm gonna do is go and get an aluminum pan. Um, good thing that as I take this out, um, we're gonna go into green next on that side, so that shouldn't make a huge difference. But I'm gonna squeeze this out and set it aside. And oh, that's so pretty, so, so pretty. I'm gonna set it aside so it can cool off a bit. Not necessarily all the way, but a bit. And then I'm gonna bring over this, this yarn mop from my spill and dip it in to soak up whatever is left in here. And at the same time, we're gonna be letting those greens uh, spread out a little bit more. So this yarn obviously was not pre-soaked, but sometimes when you have a spill, you just catch what you can and it is getting a lot lighter. I am going to add in this bit of brown that we had left over from 
making our dye stock on here. I have a feeling we'll be using this mop and layering colors on many times over the video. But I'm going to leave this in here for 10 minutes and then we'll come check in. All right. Let's see. There may be a hint of something left in the pot, but certainly given the light color that has gone on to here from what we've done thus far, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to set the mop aside and then come over with 100 milliliters of our 1% stock of forest green. So this is so far one gram of brown, one gram of green per 200 grams of yarn. So our total depth of shade will be approximately one. And this is the same dice pot and it already has acid in here. So I'm just gonna quickly stir this up. And then on our lovely brown yarn, I am gonna move the zip ties so they are at the darkest part of the brown so we can dip dye again. And depending on how quickly the green, this beautiful forest green absorbs, I don't know how far uh, we will want to put this in. I don't know if we'll want to put it in all the way or if we'll want to stop at some point in the end. But that is why we started with the brown um, because it is a little bit more neutral to then allow us the ability to decide what it is we want to do with our green. And I am dipping a little bit faster, but that's because we have some lightish areas here in the middle and I'd like them to get some color coverage. With some colors, it can be hard to say how much color is left in the pot at a given time. Oh, I can start to see the bottom, but it is still feeling fairly, oh, what's the word, opaque. Like it feels like there's a fair amount of color there, but I have a feeling that not much is left. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. We are starting to clear now. I think I'm going to go ahead and put my whole skein in here and leave it in for 20 minutes. I don't think that tiny bit of blue left will alter that pretty brown we have. Um, and then we will see if there's anything left after that time. But this way we have, we'll have completely set this color on our yarn. So I will be back in about 20 minutes. Okay, it has been 20 minutes and, oh no, oh no. Okay, one of the zip ties came off. Um, it's not tragic, Rebecca, it is not tragic. Uh, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this as a pile and pick it up. I mean, it's very pretty. Sometimes the reusable nylon zip ties, when they get really warm, uh, then they, yeah, this doesn't happen often, thankfully, but still annoying. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that and not touch it or move it until it's cool when I can put that zip tie back on. Yes, yeah, so that was a fluke. I must have just hit it at the wrong spot. But as for our color, I am really, really happy with it. I think it is very, very foresty, very tree-esque. Awesome. Uh, and there is pretty much no color left here in the pot. I mean, I can pop our yarn mop in just for good measure, but I, again, I mean, there's basically no color in here, so there's really not a lot of point of doing that. But yeah, now we can go ahead and dye up some more and then bring this mop in as needed to help clear out the pot. Okay, before we wash this, I'm gonna pop the one that's okay down below, and then we have our second one. Hmm, how am I gonna do this? Hmm, because I don't wanna like tangle or stretch it, so I think what I'm gonna do 
is I am going to just put the zip tie around the middle since I don't have like an easy, easy way to uh, open this up, but this way it'll help keep it from being tangled. Once it's dry, it should be easier to open up those knees again. Okay, let's add some water and some clear dish soap to wash off our cooled off yarn. And hopefully we won't see. Okay, we are seeing some like brownish something come out. Okay, that is manageable. Um, very, very manageable. And I can even slip the yarn in here around the zip tie a tiny bit to make sure I rinse all of that. But we'll see if this continues past this first wash. I really, really like the color. It really makes me think a little bit like of a, like some kind of pine tree. Very beautiful. Oh, that's already better. That is already better. Sometimes there's just a little bit of something that needs to be rinsed out. Um, so, yeah, but I'm not seeing any more bleeding. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this probably just one more time, but then I will put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it dry, and then we can start drying the rest of the yarn. Some of it in a time lapse, but I will do the rest of the washing off camera unless there is something notable. When dip dyeing, I really don't like to do more than 200 grams at a time. I find much more than that gets really heavy, which then becomes harder to like lift and lower and not go too fast. Plus, because when the skeins are close together, there is a little bit more of an interior and exterior to them, you can get oh, just some resist from where the yarn is next to each other and it's harder for dye to get in there. So with 200 grams or less as you dip, it's easier to like spread the yarn inside the pot so you get reasonable coverage. But anyway, now I need to go and dye up the rest of the skeins. As I dye up more of this foresty, tree, thankful colorway, I want to reflect and chat a little bit. 2020 and 2021 have had their fair share of challenges and there are so many things that I am thankful for and I just want to take a little moment and reflect on some of that today. I am so thankful for my family. Uh, my, my boys are getting so big uh, and they just bring us so much joy. I am very thankful for my husband Keith who is my partner, my best friend. All through all of our marriage and time together we've supported one another but I feel like knowing how hard these last years have been, we have really made an effort to support each other as each of us have ups and downs, which is natural with the pandemic and everything that has come for I'm part of that. So I'm very thankful for our partnership. And I'm very, very lucky that some of our favorite trips are staycations anyway. So <laughs> we've had, we have managed to make some of this time stuck at home really, really fun. I am thankful for extended friends and family who we've really made an effort to keep in touch over Zoom and phone calls. And I have some friends that I've probably spoken more to now than maybe we would have otherwise because all of us have spent so much time at home. And so I'm really thankful to have had those extra moments with people I care about greatly. Because even if, cause if we can't be together in person, the next best thing is to just hear their voices and share what we're all going through. I could probably talk about this for a really, really long time, but another thing that I am so thankful for is all of you for watching and joining me on my yarn dyeing journey. You not only inspire me to keep pushing myself to play around with different techniques and color combinations and yarn bases, but you make me feel supported and encouraged for 
exploring something that I am really, really passionate about and giving me this opportunity to share my love for yarn with all of you. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for joining me and watching these videos. And oof, let's go check in on how the yarn is coming. Here is the finished dry yarn. I really like how this turned out, but you can see, even just looking at it from this far away, there's a lot of variation from skein to skein or from bundle of mini skeins to bundle of mini skeins uh, based on how the color came out. And I honestly don't know why uh, some of the browns are feel so pale and it feels more saturated in other circumstances. Ex unless my stock was not well mixed and so therefore it was less pigmented at that start. I don't know. All I know is that the color is really, really pretty. I think if I were going to try to create this colorway again, I would increase the amount of dye from both of these colors. In total, I have the equivalent of one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn, but I would maybe pump that up to maybe even two grams of dye total. It would take longer to dip the yarn in, but it would give a more saturated color. Nevertheless, I really like this colorway. And I think it is going to be a really nice example of the soft variegation and somewhat uh, repeating colorway you can get uh, when you dip dye yarn. Our yarn mop was used in every single case to help soak up the leftover brown and to wipe up any spills on the counter from when I was measuring out dyes. The soft brown has, as you can see, some patches of darker brown and green sprinkled in. This is absolutely not a repeating colorway. It's a lot more tonal, but it's also it was also really fun to see how slowly that brown built up because there wasn't that much pigment left after each of the brown dips. But as you can see, we uh, did have enough to create a beautiful mid-toned skein. So each of these bundles were dip dyed probably in two separate circumstances. Um, but you can see that the brown may go up further on some skeins than on others. And so there is some variation of color within 100 gram set. Now, to be fair, since these are groups of 10 gram mini skeins, they could have slipped in position uh, with the rings. So that could make the transitions feel even softer. But there is an impact with how the dyes are able to reach the fiber based on where the yarn is located on the outside versus pressed up together. So I want to take a look and twist up these two bundles and see if we notice massive differences within the minis. I think it could be a little hard to tell when things are twisted exactly how similar or different they are. Certainly you can see, which we could see before, that this set of fingering weight is deeper overall than uh, the DK, but there is like a, a there are a couple skeins here that do feel lighter overall than the rest. This doesn't mean that your skein dip dyed would be asymmetric. I think that if you want the most consistency in a skein, then really make sure that you separate and move the yarn around as you're dipping. And you maybe even use a little bit less acid, so that way the colors strike a little bit slower, which can help you get more even coverage on the part that you're dipping in. But I really hope that you've enjoyed this foresty kind of colorway. And here are most of the rest of these minis. Hoo-hoo-wee, that is a lot. <laughs> but I am thankful for my new assistant, a skein twister, which I will chat more about in the Hanukkah vlog that will take place after all the Hanukkah special videos.
I really hope that you enjoyed my thankful colorway I created this year. And I also hope you enjoyed hearing about some of the things I'm thankful for and seeing some pictures of me as a little girl. As I mentioned earlier, I am so thankful for all of you for watching and participating in these videos. And please just make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. During Hanukkah and a bit beyond, I will have a new video coming out every night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And some of these will be premieres with me in the live chat room so we can hang out and chat while reacting to the new yarn dyeing video and it is just all so much fun so thank you all so much for joining me on my color journey for these last few years I am having so much fun don't forget to check the video description for any cyber Monday yarn deals that I've come across today that you still have time to take advantage of for the last few more hours of Monday night but as for Tuesday what kind of yarn do you think I will dye tomorrow night? I cannot wait to show you what will be coming on night three. Thank you so much for watching.